In today's video, we're going to be checking out the Govee Outdoor Light Pro. I've heard good things about this, so I decided I wanted to check it out. Thanks to Govee for providing this for today's video. Let's get started. Now, this is the Outdoor Light Pro version in 100 feet. There is also a Pro version in 200 feet available, and they also have white, or you can get them in black. Now, the 200 feet model, you can only use 150 feet until they come out with the power adapter extender, which will allow you to use all 200 feet of that. Now, there's also a non-pro version. It comes in 50 feet, 100 feet, or 150 feet. It does not have a black version. It does not have matter. And the other main difference is it does not have warm white LEDs. That's one of the main reasons I wanted to go with the Pro. It's gonna cost you a little bit more, but you get the warm white. These are RGB WWIC, meaning it has the full color spectrum, all the warm white, as well as they're individually addressable. And this is matter certified, which means it will work with Alexa, it works with Google Home, and it will also work with Apple HomeKit through matter. Another benefit of these is they are IP67 waterproof, meaning the lights as well as the power adapter can be outside and it is weather resistant. And then the Pro version is able to be spliced so you can get some really perfect ends where you'll be able to cut them and re-splice them so that you're able to make transitions in the perfect spot. And this will work in the Gobi Home app. And then here are some more specs about the lights. Now, one thing you can do is if you have other Gobi lights, you can actually create a scene and have them kind of all work together, which is pretty cool. Here is a guide about matter. And then here is some information on getting them spliced and wired together. So to get these installed, we're gonna connect them all together, make sure everything works properly. We're going to prepare our stable ladder. We're going to locate our power supply in which we want to install, making sure we have enough length. And then we're going to clean the surface and install the lights and recommend installing them three to eight centimeters away from the wall. Make sure the surface is clean and dry. And then we're going to tear off the tape and put in the adapters to have a permanent install. So here in the accessories kit, we do get some clips that we can screw in to mount these different clips. Now it looks like there's about 30 clips here. It does come with some extra adhesive, but I did pick up a hundred pack of these so that I can mount every single light to the roof. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Here we have a few anchors that we could mount the power supply. Here we have one power extension cable. Here it comes with two more extensions. And then here it comes with two different adapters where we can splice the cable and make a new run. So it's really, really great that we have those. These are pretty big. It would be nice if those were a little bit smaller. And then here we have the power adapter. So there we're going to be able to power it with that. Here we have an extension. And then getting to the first light, we have quite a bit of extension here that we can use. Let's now get these plugged into the lights. So here we have the light, a little bit thick, but looks pretty good there. And then there you have adhesive on the back of each of them with a weather resistant shield at the end that we'll be able to splice them together. And right next to the power adapter is the control box. So this will be what has the Wi-Fi signal and everything in here and a power button to turn them on and off. Now let's connect them all. And there we have them all connected, glowing. They look pretty good. Let's go ahead and open the Govi app to get them set up. So here in the Govi app, we're just going to tap plus here. Here it automatically found the device. So we're going to add. Please short press the on and off button. And those are done. Next, it's asking about how many segments I'm using, but we can set that all up in the settings after we have them installed. And now we're gonna add them to Wi-Fi. And now we have tons of different options here. I'll go more into this, but here we can simply turn them on and off. Now this will be able to work over Wi-Fi and it also connects through Bluetooth, which is cool. All right, looking at the three cables here, the main power cable up to the box about four feet, up to there about three more feet, and then total length is 20 feet for that original cable. Then with the extensions, the small extension is this one right here, which goes to, I'd say it's, four feet, and then the longer extension is up to about 11 feet. So it's nice that there are three extensions. Um, so let's go ahead, start with the power outlet and get the first string installed. So here the distance between each light is about 18 and a half inches of string and center to center would be about 20 inches. And then here, when you go to a new line, the string is about 19 and 20 and a half. So just about a half inch difference between when you add in a new connection. And each string is about 16 feet long. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to 
place the lights at the top of the peak here and then make them centered on each side even and then go down from there. Well, hang on a second, Brett. You haven't talked about the most important part about this light and that is the placement of the lights. So they recommend to place them three to eight centimeters away from the wall. Now you could do that or I guess you could also place them at the edge of the soffit if you wanted to or you could place them somewhere in between. So here's what I did. I went through and I tried out all the three different options to see which one I like best. Here we have the one that is at the edge that kind of gives it a more classic Christmas light look where you can see the light at the very edge. And I think it also hides pretty well when they're at the edge. Then I tried them in the middle here, which actually does a really good job of illuminating the entire wall. And then I tried them up against the wall. Now, when they are in the middle, it gives these little arches on the wall, which looks pretty cool. And if they're right up next to the wall, it makes it a more V shape, which looks pretty cool as well. So this is all personal preference, but I ended up deciding on going with in the middle of the soffit or about five inches away, or I think it's about 10 and a half centimeters, if you wanna know exactly what I did. Now that we know where we want them, let's go ahead and get them installed. Now the actual install doesn't take very long, but measuring and making sure everything works out perfectly did take a while. I'd put some up, get down the ladder, look at it, and kind of plan out what I was going to do, and then I'd carry on. Now I'd recommend measuring out how long you need for the gable here. Start at the top of the gable so that you can make them even on each side, and then you can easily go down and then kind of figure out the bottom. So it didn't take too long once I figured that out. Um, each home is of course different, so these little um, eyelids at the end were a little bit difficult to figure out, but I think I finally got it, and now we're ready to move on to the first extension. So it's time to make a decision. Am I going to go up here and just have the lights come across the front, which just leaves a little light bulb and kind of illuminates the porch. But I think I'm actually going to take the five foot extender and then I'm gonna go across the home right here to have a unison look all the way across the siding of the house until I get to the next section. So it's now time to do our first split where I'm gonna take off this light right here and then extend it up to the next level. So here we have our extender and is what we're going to do is need to make sure that we have the right end. So is what we're gonna do is cut off this one light and attach it to here. So here I need to be using the male end, which is this side right here, that I will then cut off and attach to here so that I can then attach it to here. Let's do it. So here when we take this cap off, then we unscrew that. We now have the sections in which we're going to put the wire. So now I'm going to cut off this light right here, splice the cable so that I can attach it, and make sure it is unplugged. Now because this is the last light, I'm going pretty close to light, but it's recommended that you cut halfway between two different LEDs. I'm then going to strip 26 millimeters off of the insulated cable, and then I'm going to strip 12 millimeters off of each cable so that then they can fit into the fitting. First, I'm gonna thread it through the weatherproof housing. Then I'm gonna pull down these clips and then lock them in with each different color. I would then do a cable pull, make sure it was tight. If it wasn't, I needed to push it in a little bit more or strip a little bit more wire. Now we're going to screw on the end. And then we're going to screw everything back together. And at the end of each line, there is a cap here, but we don't need that. So I'm actually just gonna cut it off. Now I might adjust this a little bit later, but let's go ahead and move on. And then I threaded the extension through the little crevices of the house until I came up to the next line. And then I'm using my Jerry Rig Everything Knife, hashtag not sponsored, to kind of get my spacing. And then I'm gonna go across this whole line to get everything installed. I now need to do one more splice up there and continue with the last few strands. So they're gonna go up here and over. Now one of the things I did is I'm going to be going to the top and going down under to stick these on. So I made a little template. I can put the light in and then push it against the wall and stick it up. So hopefully that will help have a unison look all the way across. I don't have a ladder tall enough yet. And so we have three strands left that should take us all the way to this end. Now for the next gap, I was hoping I could use another five foot extension, but it was about seven feet I needed. So I ended up using the 10 foot and then using the coupling at the top. Now it's time to lay out the next section, make sure that I have the top aligned so that I can now stick on the rest of the LEDs. And now it's time for our ASMR setting up Christmas lights 
with the natural sounds of outside. I hope you enjoyed the sounds of today. Tune in next week when we listen to the snowfall. Now the final step is to just end it right there with one of the ends, removing the rest of the line and I might expand later if they come out with an expansion set. So let's do that and then I'm gonna go through, screw them all in and let's test out how they look. We have now finished the install and this looks pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and go over how everything turned out. So first off, I'm starting over here at the edge. I still need to kind of finish the power cord um, and add an outlet over here. But then I decided to put the lights up here and we ended up with about five inches or about 11 centimeters off the wall here. The further out you go, the less dome you're gonna see. And the closer you get, the more triangular um, shape you're gonna see. But I'm pretty happy with this. During the day you do see these, so you can see what that looks like. But I think um, overall knowing the result of what these do, it's going to be a really clean look. Now most of the install time was figuring out how these are actually going to work. Now it does come with some extra adhesive so that I could pull them off and reposition them and then I'm going to uh, screw in all the clips to give a permanent install. So here with the eaves, um, you wanna make sure that you start kind of in the middle there and then get them set up and then go down to get the full perfect kind of install and make them all even. So right here at the top, that's where the first extension ended. So I was able to put it right behind a little motion sensor there, came down, came around here, and I kind of want to illuminate underneath these so that there wasn't any dark areas of the home. And then this is where we had the first um, coupling right there. Now one thing with the splicing, I wish I would have changed the splice each time. So I ended up using this splice, which is at the end. I needed to start um, one of the extensions with the other splice so that I had more of those um, because I did run out at the very end. Now originally I was going to use an extension and come up here and illuminate this edge but then it just would have been a single LED and it wouldn't have uh, done much. So I decided to have a unison look across the home and I ended up doing the wall back here under this awning and it turned out really well. You can see how bright it makes underneath here where there's never really any lights showing up there so it was a pretty clean look so there i was actually only needing to use one extension so i used a short extension from here to here only removing one light and then i used one full strand there going to there perfectly ending to go to the next section where i used the extension so it looks like I could have maybe done something here to illuminate this side, but I think it just would have overall made the install a little more complicated. So here I used the long extension and then I cut it to length right there. I still need to kind of attach it. But then moving up here, I started at the top there, lined that up, kind of measured how far I wanted that to go. And then I made my cool little pattern to get on the top of the roof and then kind of attach all these and then line them all up. And then right here we have one of our next extensions. So you can see it just looks a tiny bit different and there's really no difference in the length there. You can't really tell at all. And then here I was able to wrap it around. I considered needing an extension here, but I ended up not. And I was able to get down there, kind of illuminate that corner and then coming straight across here over the windows and then ending right here. And at the end, because I ended up using the two cap ends, I just used the other type and I kind of electrical taped the end to kind of finish it off. So really cool that I was able to do those different gaps and line it up exactly the way I wanted to. I think that was definitely my favorite part, being able to have so many extensions and make the cuts exactly where I wanted to. And I'm not really a professional. And if you had a professional install these, I think they would be able to do a pretty great job. So let's go ahead and check out some of the different scenes and color options.
All right, sorry my camera can't go wider here, but I do have the GoPro that kind of shows the full view. All right, so here we go. Looking at the app, we have a ton of different options. Um, starting off here, we have ambience or we have illumination. So I can easily change the brightness. So here we go down to you know 48% and let's bring it down to 3%. So if I just want a tiny bit of light, I am able to do that. Now there is a street light right across the street, kind of brightening up a little bit, but um, you can see this does a really great job of brightening the whole house, especially right there under the little awning. So here we have the color temperature. We can go all the way up to 6,500 Kelvin and all the way down to 2,200. So depending on what um, light kind of you're looking for, I love having these warm white LEDs. So I really like how whenever you change color, it does this kind of um, fade into the next color, which is really nice. Then down here, I can do some different color temperature scenes that are already preset. So if I want to do a relaxing scene, we have a reading scene, work scene, uh, illumination, and then we can also add our own so we can go through and create our own scene. Okay, next here you have the music dream view. So if you buy the dream view adapter, you can have these work with music and a lot of cool different things. Um, going down, let's go to timer here. So is what you can do is create a timer where it's automatically going to turn on. Um, you can set the time of the day when it's going to turn on when it's going to turn off, and so on. So you have those different options there. And then you can also do the turn on turn off. You have a sleeping mode, so once activated, the light will gradually gradually darken until it gets too dark. And then here you have some more information on how to get those automations set up. And so here we're gonna set it to turn on. Now I wish there was a sunset option, but you could use the smart home platform. You connect these two to have it automatically turn on. So here we have an option for image effects. So I could upload an image and then it would automatically change the light. So here there is just kind of a already pre-uploaded one. Um, but now let's go down here, we have brightness. So I can change the brightness, but then we have the different modes. So we can do music mode. So right now, depending on what we're listening to. So right now it's listening to my voice and adjusting based on my device. We can also choose the music sync from the device mic, which it's currently in the garage, so it can't hear me too much. And then you can also choose the sensitivity. And here I can choose different dynamic, party, calm, and so on. And right now it's on auto color, but I could then go through and choose the color I want with the different color will. So that's a pretty cool option. So next we have color. So here we can choose the segmented option. So right now I can choose the different segments I want to adjust. So let's go ahead and choose these to make red and white. So I'm gonna choose those and click red and boom, it's gonna make those red. Then I'm going to uncheck those and I'm going to check the other ones and I can make them white. So here it's doing, uh, it looks like five segments at a time. And if I want to choose these ones to be more the warm white, I can do that, which is really cool. I wasn't able to do this on other lights that I tested out. These are working here on the Eufy though. So I really like being able to have full control like that. And then once I have my scene, I can save to my colors. So I can choose to save and it will save it into the colors I've created. Oh, and then we also have a gradient option. So if I choose gradient, you can see it's going to flow through the different colors that I have selected between the red and green. And that looks really cool. Some really nice vibrant gradient colors there. Now, if we want to go more advanced, we have the option to do that. So we have effects here at the top, but then down here at the bottom, we have the choice to individually select all the colors. So if I want to do a red white pattern here, I can go through and select each um, one. And you can see that it's adjusting as I change. Sometimes I could do two red, two white, but now I have created this really cool scene and you can see it's already automatically doing a certain pattern. So we can turn off the speed if we want it to just stay there, or we can increase the speed if we want it to, <laughs> if we want it to kind of dance around. So here is the clockwise. We also have counterclockwise and then we have cycle. And here with the red and white, it's kind of hard to know exactly what it's doing so i might need to choose a few different options but wow lots of color lots of color options there so let's choose here all right now let's try some of the gradient patterns so that's just going to 
So here it's just kind of bounce around. You can see as I increase the speed, you really notice the effect. Here we have Twinkle. Oh, so it's just a few lights will flash every now and then. So speeding, going too fast to, <laughs> is a little too much. And then here we have a nice kind of breathing where it's gonna have this breathe effect between the different lights that we have selected. So that is the color. Now, next let's go to scene. So they have already created a ton of different scenes that you can use. So let's go into festival scene here. So here we have the Halloween A, we have Halloween B. Here we have Halloween C. I really love these colors, super bright and vibrant, really happy with how these turned out. Here we have Halloween D. And here this one does have a little bit of a flashing light to it. Here we have Christmas. Here we have Christmas tree. So just kind of like some little dancing lights. This one might be my favorite. This is Christmas gift. Really bright, fun colors. Here we have sled. I like how they kind of chase across the home. That's cool. We have different Easter colors. We have Mother's Day. Oh, here's our Thanksgiving one. And as you can see, there is a bunch more. Here's Carnival. Here we have Valentine's. Here's Dance Party. Let's see Fireworks. Again, these are super bright and vibrant. St. Patrick's Day. Here's a candlelight. Hanukkah. Game day. Depends on what team. I probably can adjust these. Uh, here we have Winter Wonderland. Here we have a New Year's. And here we have a birthday. Pretty cool. And Father's Day. And then last here we have DIY. So this is where I can go through and create my own custom scenes to have them work. A ton of different options here in the Govi app to get exactly the way that you want them to be. And then here at the top, if I want to turn them off, I can just tap the power. And it shows up here at the top if they are on or off. It doesn't change based on the color, which that would be pretty cool. And here, if we go in the settings, we have a few more options. We can change the name. We can choose power off state. So if the power goes out, how will they come back on? Will they stay off? Will they stay on? And so on. Here we have number of segments. So right now it's set to six. Oh, so here it's showing green lights. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six green lights. So we wanna keep it at the six number. So if you add more lights, you can adjust it there. Here we can change our Wi-Fi settings, see the firmware, and so on. And so that is the Govi Outdoor Lights Pro. Now this kit does cost a little bit more, but it was so nice that I was able to customize and cut the lines and extensions and had all of the customization I needed to really fit it perfectly to this home. Now it did take me more time, but I was able to get everything aligned exactly the way I wanted it to. So overall, really impressed with all the different color options. There's so many to choose from. I don't even know if you really need to go and create your own, but it's nice that you have all control of what's going on. I like how it kind of segments out different sections so that I can quickly choose a pattern for the entire home, or I can go through and be very detailed if I want to be on what is happening on each and every light in the home. I love the gradient patterns. I think the red, green, and blue colors in this are very bright and vibrant, but I also love that it has the full 2700 to the 6500 K on the Kelvin scale, then that's, we're using that really warm white here. And you can also integrate the warm white into the other scenes, which I couldn't do 
on the UV lights. So these are really, really great. Now, a few of the areas I had the hardest time deciding on was here under the awning. Um, I'm really happy though with how this looks going underneath. So it illuminates the home all the way through. So you can see here from the garage to the awning to this next gable over here. So I really love how I was able to do that. And then the distance is the other hard part. So I think it would have looked fine if I did it on the outside. And the further you get into the home, the more bright and vibrant it does. I like how I went about five inches to 11 centimeters away from the wall there and I think it's really important to create a little pattern so that you can get every light kind of aligned in the perfect spot and so it was just kind of hard to figure out some of these parts on the garage and getting it through and then really I wish I would have had a seventh section then I could have done one more area so hopefully we can get more um, like just a little more section because I think this can go up to 150 feet um, so it will be nice if if later down the road I can just buy a single section and then I can go back and I can add more if I really want to. And again, if you do buy the 200 set, 150 will work, but then you need to get their little power adapter to extend it to the full 200 feet. And it does come in that white or black option. So if you have any further questions about the Govi Outdoor Lights Pro, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you want to pick one up, I'll leave links to the different options down there in the description as well. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.